Okay, <clears throat> would you open up your Bibles to Joel? Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. <clears throat> and then uh, Joel. And so we're going to read chapter one. All right, let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, thank you for this time as we could come and listen to your holy word. It's, it's necessary for our growth, Father. The Bible says to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless this time as the word goes forth that it may uh, that we may... Um, Rejoice in the truth, and you may grant understanding, Father. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the blood of our Lord Jesus that washes all our sins away. In his name we pray. Amen. Okay, Joel chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants, of the land have this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation that which the palmer worm hath left the the locust uh, hath the locust eaten that which the locust hath left the canker worm eaten that hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and have the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine uh, waste and barked my fig tree. <clears throat> he hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers mourn. The field is wasted. The, la the land mourneth. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O you husbandmen, howl, ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourself and lament, ye priest, how ye ministers of the altar. Come lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God, for this, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly. Uh, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the day <clears throat> uh, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It is as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clogs. The garters are laid desolate the barns are broken down for the corn is withered how do the beast groan the herds of of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture yea the flocks of sheep are made desolate O lord to thee will i cry for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field the beast of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of water are dried up, and the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Okay, 
uh, Joel chapter one. Let's turn over now to Revelation. <clears throat> You heard me say many times that the Bible's a spiritual book and it, it it's uh, full of uh, figurative spiritual language. And um, um, just, just let me show you something that the Lord, go to Matthew 13. Um, when, the, when the Lord spoke a parable, uh, for example, in, in Matthew 13, um, I want to, uh, look at, uh, look at verse 24 there. Another parable put forth, uh, unto, he put forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a, a man which sowed good seed in the field. But what? <laughs> But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not thou sow good seed in the field from whence? And then it had tares. And he said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou them? that we go and gather them up. But he said, nay, let's, while you gather up the tares, ye, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I'll say to the reapers, gather together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So this is a parable. And, and, uh, uh, the disciples asked him, you know, explain to us these things. So before uh, we we read that, uh, we're going to see um, these tears are a picture of something. The field is a picture of something. The wheat are a picture of something. See, uh, this is how uh, we work with spiritual things. See. Just, just as uh, we learn this from the Lord Jesus, he, he's the one that teaches us. So if, if you flip over and and uh, um, look at verse 36 in Matthew 13. And Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, he, now he's going to explain the spiritual teaching. See, he's good. he says here, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. See, and, and, and so the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. See how he's explaining the spiritual teaching of that parable, and and uh, uh, this is how we we rightly divide the word and uh, and look uh, and the, see the deep things as the Holy Spirit teaches us and shows us these things. See, so thirty nine, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. Therefore, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be at the end of this world. Uh, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, which is coarse hell or the lake of fire. And there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Okay. So um, we're... This is the same thing uh, that we're doing in Revelation. It's the same thing. Go over to Revelation now. And remember in chapter 8, we looked at um, when it says the third part of this, the third part of that. And 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 so uh, the third part uh, we've seen from Scripture is the church. See? 
and and we looked at all this other language, wormwood, and all these have figurative spiritual meaning. Okay, so we we uh, we're going to pick it up in in chapter nine. It says in verse um, again in one and two, uh, chapter nine. And the fifth angel sounded, and I I saw I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and and so we we have to know what the, who that star is, and we know from scripture, back in chapter eight, uh, there is a great star in verse ten that fell from heaven, and we've seen that star is Satan. And that star is called Wormwood, see, which means bitter. And he's the one that darkens the gospel. He's the one that uh, silences the gospel, say. And so here this star is Satan in chapter 9, verse 1. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And we've seen that uh, to be given the key means to uh, God is allowing or permitting, say, this, this to take place. It's a picture of the great tribulation period, say. And we've seen that Christ has the keys in chapter, Revelation chapter 1. Here, uh, Christ is given the key uh, to op uh, to Satan to allow him, uh, as it says here, uh, to open this bottomless pit. So now uh, in verse two, he, that's that star. This is Satan, the devil. He opened the bottomless pit because God would get, has given the key to him to, to permit him to do this. Okay. And this is, this, the scriptures have to be fulfilled regarding uh, for the great tribulation period. Uh, go to Revelation 17. Look at verse 17 over there. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. See that? It's right there. So the, the great tribulation has to be fulfilled. And that's why it says, to, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Okay, so um, back in Revelation 9 2, he, Satan, opened the bottomless pit. Now, um, okay, let's. Uh, he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay, so uh, this word arose, it means to go up. It, it means to go up. And um, uh, and so the smoke, the smoke, um, this this bottomless pit is is a picture of Satan's dominion. Um, we looked at this before, um, Satan's kingdom. And of course, um, the the false gospels, the false prophets, they are the ones that come out of Satan's dominion, uh, or you can say this bottomless pit, say. And so that's why we have a, a picture here of, um, of uh, the great tribulation. And, and so um, God is the, and all these, the, this language ties in chapter eight uh, about the silence of the gospel. This is similar language as we, as we work with these verses. So he opened the bottomless pit and there arose smoke out of the pit. Okay, go over to um, Proverbs 10. Look at verse 26. Proverbs 10, 
Proverbs 10, 26. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. And so uh, smoke, what does smoke do to the eyes? It irritates them. Uh, so you can't see clear, uh, blinds them. And so um, what would the smoke be a picture of? What blinds the eyes? False gospels, see? false gospels that come from Satan's dominion that come out of the bottomless pit that come through the false prophets or the false church see and so go back to Revelation 9 there uh here it says uh the smoke um and there arose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace now um <clears throat> This word great uh, furnace is from a Greek word that means to set on fire or to consume. And, and of course, uh, Satan's dominion uh, would consume. Uh, that's why I read Joel, all the fruit trees in this have perished and the wine is dried up. Um, he would have the gospel silence, say, and um, um that's why um, when we read some of these things, um, uh, like in chapter 8, remember verse 7, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast onto the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass burnt up. See, that's the language of the gospel, silenced. And so... Um, here, uh, this smoke came out of a great furnace. Let's go to, um, Genesis 19. <clears throat> Look at verse uh, 28. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, remember uh, Sodom and Gomorrah in verse 28. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward the land of the plain. Behold, lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. See? And so, uh, of course, Sodom and Gomorrah, a picture of those bringing false gospels, the false church. And, um, um, and um, here... The smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And so uh, out of this bottomless pit came forth smoke of a great furnace. Say. Uh, pictures of uh, these people um, dwelling in Satan's dominion um, under the wrath of God, uh, he, he, under uh, having eternal damnation, you see. Um, uh, the furnace is used for eternal damnation. Look at Matthew 13, uh, 41 and 42. <clears throat> 13, 41 and 42. The son, <clears throat> the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be weeping, or there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And, and so uh, furnace of fire uh, is a type of eternal damnation. And so um, uh, this is, of course, the, the, the where Satan's dominion will end up into the lake of fire. And of course, um, uh, the bottomless pit, uh, Satan's kingdom, Satan's dominion is where the smoke uh, comes out of. Look at, uh, go back to Revelation 9. So 
um, we're right on track because look what happens. Um, we're seeing that smoke uh, would would be a picture of of false gospels because it blinds the eyes. It irritates the eyes, like it says in Proverbs ten, as smoke to the eyes. And um, and so what what does false gospels do? Uh, it darkens the light of the gospel. But he, the language here says, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, see? And this is what the smoke does, or the false gospels. It darkens um, the gospel. It darkens the light. Remember, Jesus is the light. This, again, is... Uh, uh, language of the great tribulation period say and god is allowing this permitting this because he's because in verse one um it was given him the, the keys it was given that star it was satan the keys and he opened the bottomless pit uh, which is a, again a picture of the start of the great tribulation and not not that I'm not saying that it started in in the fifth angel when the fifth angel sounded. We're seeing all this uh, great tribulation and um, and the first seal when it was opened, and the second seal, and the third. In fact, look at uh, Revelation eight and verse twelve. The fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, it's the same teaching as verse two, when it says, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. See, and we know that that smoke came out of that bottomless pit. See, so, Again, uh, it's a, it's figurative language, just like I we read in Matthew 13 about the tares, the wheat and the tares. And the Lord Jesus says, the tares are the children of the devil. Uh, the wheat is, is this. The harvest is this. And so here we're seeing the smoke is our the is false gospels. See, and the bottomless pit where the the uh, smoke comes out of is Satan's dominion. Uh, of course, where uh, false church, the false prophets dwell in Satan's dominion. And uh, uh, that's what darkens the light, see? So the smoke would, would uh, the false gospels darken the, the light, see, of the gospel. And that's, again, uh, language that uh, talks about silence, the gospel being silence, just like uh, chapter 8, verse 12, same teaching there. So, um, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay? And so we have this this language that, that, um, um, that points to the great tribulation period. Um, okay, now let's go to into verse 3. It says, uh, and there came out of the smoke um, locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth and have power. And so, of course, you're not going to look at this and, and look at that literally, you see. It's spiritual language. Who are these locusts that come out of the smoke? Who's the one that comes forth from false gospels? False prophets. False, false prophets, okay? That's the locusts. The locusts are false prophets. And, and, uh, and it says, uh, there came out smoke, uh, out of the smoke, locusts upon the earth. That's what silences the gospel, 
is the false prophets, the false church, those that have um, holding to the false doctrine. See, that's why it says the locust upon the earth. <clears throat> and unto them was given power uh, as scorpions, see? And, and remember, uh, God allowing this because it, unto them was given power, just like the key was was given uh, to that star that fell, see? And so uh, unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. So uh, go to Exodus chapter 10. We're going to look at locusts. <clears throat> Now, if you see the 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 spiritual language in this, that you could see how clear this this uh, all this language is here in in chapter ten, verse twelve through fifteen. And the Lord said unto Moses, "Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that that they may come up upon the land of Egypt, Egypt." and over eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail had left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a lot of meat in these, in these, in these verses here. Why east wind? And 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 of course it it's God's judgment. God uses the east wind. The east wind is judgment, and um, and so um, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them were no such locusts as they. Neither after them shall be. Language that points to the great tribulation period. It's in similar to Matthew 24. Where, so here it says, before them there were no such locusts as they neither after them shall be such. And then look at verse 15 now. For they covered the face of the whole earth. So we know spiritually that locusts are pictures of what? Right false prophets and so um look what happens here for they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened see that and back in revelation the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke and out of the smoke came forth locusts here same teaching they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. See, that's what false prophets do. They darken the land because they don't have the light of the gospel. And so uh, if you have uh, millions of locusts, uh, the land is going to be darkened. And what are they going to do? They, they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit trees which is a picture of how they corrupt the gospel and they silence the gospel, see? They eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees, which the hail had left, and there remained not any green thing in the trees nor any herbs on the field throughout all the land of Egypt, see? No gospel. So there you have uh, locusts. Go to Psalms 105. Uh, look at 34 and 35 there. <clears throat> 105. Okay. Uh, he spake in the locust came and the caterpillars and that without number and did eat up all the herbs in their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. See? So you so you have a picture back there of the great tribulation and and how locusts are used as false prophets and uh, uh that's why I read Joel see and um if you want to go over to Joel again go to Joel chapter 1 
<clears throat> this is all language of uh, a picture of great tribulation, how the, the gospel silenced. But did you notice in verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4, that which the palmer worm have left, the locusts have the locusts eaten. All these, this language, palmer worm, locusts, canker worm, they're all, they're all pictures of false prophets. See, drunkards, all that is language that points to false prophets, uh, the false church. Uh, and says, um, <clears throat> when it says the new wine is cut off, see the gospel silence. Um, again, it's it's uh, a pictures of the grant, the great tribulation. Um, look at verse seven. Uh, well, verse six, for a nation is come up. Uh, that's Satan's nation, Satan's kingdom upon my land strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion and have the cheek teeth of a great lion he satan hath laid my vine waste see silenced the gospel and barked my fig tree he satan hath made it clean bare and cast it away the branches there were made white um Look at verse 9. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. That would be the gospel silenced. Verse 10. The field is wasted. The land mourneth. The corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. All this language points to the gospel silence. Verse 12. The vine is dried up. Why? Because of that nation in verse 6 that come upon the Lord's land. In Exodus, it's that nation was, uh, we could say, was locust, uh, spiritually speaking, see? And, and so um, you look at this language figuratively, and you can, it'll, it, it flows when you understand the nature of the Great Tribulation. So 12 and Joel 1, 12, the vine is dried up, the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree, also the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered from the sons of men. See? So this is this would has to be fulfilled before the end of time. The great tribulation has to run its course. See? Now, uh, flip. remember in Amos, go to the... Just flip over a few pages to Amos 8. Look at verse 11 there. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. See? He's sending a famine in the land. The gospel is silenced because it's, there's a famine for hearing the words of the Lord. So uh, it ties all into this, uh, what we're looking at in Revelation. So go back to Revelation 9. <clears throat> now that's, this word uh, in, in, in verse 3, it means power, this or this word power means control, uh, influence or control. So um, on to, it says there in verse three, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Okay, so, so far we see that the bottomless pit, Satan's dominion here, because the smoke comes from Satan's dominion. What is the smoke? The false gospels. What comes uh, out of the smoke? False prophets, the locusts. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, say. And and upon them, these, these uh, and unto them, uh, these locusts or these false prophets was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. Okay, 
Now, um, the, again, that word power means control. And a God is allowing this, see? Unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. So this is uh, permitted because it, this has to be fulfilled. Like I, I said, the, uh, I read in Revelation 17, verse 17 there. And so uh, locusts are the false prophets. And so um, what do you think the scorpions are a picture of? I didn't hear. Yeah, false prophets also. You got to look at this spiritually. You got to look at this spiritually, okay? And you then you, you'll see clearly this figurative language, just like the Lord Jesus, when his disciples says, explain to us the wheat and the tares. And he, and he right, right then he says, the, 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 the one that sowed them, so the seed is the son of man. The the, um, the children of the tares are the tares are the children of the devil. Uh, and and each one, each thing he went down, he gave them the spiritual meaning. Say, just like just like the same thing here. What's the what's the bottomless pit a picture of? Who are these locusts a picture of? Who uh, what's the uh, smoke a picture of? Say. And um, and so scorpions, as scorpions of the earth, have power. Um, go over to uh, the word scorpion. It means to pierce, to sting. And um, um, as uh, go to Ezekiel. Look at verse uh, chapter two, verse six. <clears throat> Ezekiel 2, look at verse 6. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among uh, scorpions. Uh, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Say Thou does dwell among scorpions. Are you going to look at that and say uh, Ezekiel uh, was dwelling around literal scorpions? Or are you going to look at this and say he was dwelling around those that had false gospels? He was those bringing false uh, prophets and those bringing false gospels. That's that's what it's teaching there. Though thou dwell among scorpions, say. And and, and it, the whole language goes with that, see? It says, uh, be not afraid of their words, see? They're false gospels, they're false doctrines, though they be a rebellious house, see? It's the false church. And so you, if you know anything about a, a scorpion, and we're going to look at... Uh, um, uh, and, and see the spiritual teaching, of course, uh, where's their poison at? In the tail, right? In the tail. And um, uh, that's where their poison is at. Now go to Isaiah chapter 9. Look at verse 15. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Okay? The prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Okay, so you have a picture here of uh, uh, of the uh, uh, scorpion's poison is in their tail. And it says right there, the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. And so that's where the poison comes out of those false prophets' mouth. Uh, their false gospels is, the, is that poison, see? And that's why these locusts and these scorpions 
uh, are pictures of false prophets. See? Go to um, Luke chapter 10. Look at verse 19. Luke 10, 19. <clears throat> Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Okay? Again, figurative spiritual language. Of course, Greater is he than it, it, that is in us than he that is in the world, you see. That poison from the scorpion doesn't affect us, those false gospels. Uh, Jesus says you could drink any day, deadly thing in Mark 16 and it will not hurt you. And uh, a stranger will not listen to. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So... Uh, but we have power, uh, say, over serpents and scorpions. And so, um, again, false prophets. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, see? And so, to God's elect, uh, false gospels do not hurt us because we have the truth. We follow the gospel of the Lord Jesus but if those that are not in the book of life, they're going to get snared into false doctrine, and and uh, uh, they don't they don't understand spiritual things. See, um, God hasn't the Holy Spirit hasn't is not in that individual, and that's why they're following. Um, it's as they're hurt by the poison. See. They're 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 stung by that by that scorpion that poison gospel. Uh, now you know when it says here serpents and scorpions, uh, the Lord Jesus called those Pharisees serpents. See, so we know uh, serpents and scorpions are false prophets. Go to Matthew uh, twenty three where he, where Jesus said that. Look at look at uh, twenty three. Look at verse thirty three. There, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Okay, and so uh, God likening serpents and and uh, scorpions onto false prophets. So we're right in line with the spiritual teachings. Say. Okay? And again, the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals uh, these things to us. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's one thing to read Revelation. It's another thing uh, to understand the words and the language that, that, that come out of Revelation, see? And, and that's where the, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, shows us and gives us understanding. Not everybody is going to understand the great tribulation. And, and that's because um, God is withholding uh, and, and blinding the minds of, of those that are not in the Lamb's book of life. They won't see it. See, they won't see it. Yet, uh, um, during the time... Uh, the books are open. The Lord uh, reveals truth to us. See? And so um, uh, the scorpions and the uh, locusts are pictures of fa the false church, the false prophets. Okay. And um, uh, go to James chapter three. Look at verse eight. Okay, now we know that that the scorpions uh, have poison in their tail, and we know it's a false gospels. 
the, that poison. And here in eight, it says the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. See, just like the scorpion's tail. It's, it's, it's deadly poison. And so um, false gospels, see, uh, it's, it's similar to the, the, the poison in a scorpion's tail. Uh, false gospels uh, bring, um, of course, uh, these people that are that are hurt by the false gospels, uh, they're going to end up in the lake of fire. See, and so uh, I'm just going to sum up uh, what we what we worked with so far, and then we'll have to uh, pick it up in chapter uh, uh, nine, verse four next time. And so um, we see that. Uh, that star that fell in verse one uh, is Satan, and we it goes with the same star in, in chapter eight and verse um, uh, ten there, and uh, and the name of that star remember was called Wor Wormwood, and so uh, the star fell and unto him uh, and from heaven onto the earth and to him now now that star is called him which is Satan, was given the key of the bottomless pit, God allowing or permitting uh, the great tribulation um, to run its course. And, and that's what we're going to see, and we're seeing in these chapters, say. And uh, so he, that's the star that fell, he opened the bottomless pit, uh, which is, is Satan's dominion, Satan's kingdom, that's where false gospels come forth and false prophets. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And that's what darkens the gospel. It's the false gospels on this earth that darken it, just like the smoke would darken the uh, you've seen fires that we have here in California and and uh, other places and it's it's so the smoke is so thick uh the 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 light doesn't shine through it's as it darkens see it darkens the the land uh, uh, where that smoke is uh spiritually this is what false gospels do all over the world it darkens the light. And then we get into verse three. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And uh, what comes forth from false gospels? False prophets, locusts are false prophets. And unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. Say. And the scorpions are... Uh, false prophets and they have poison um, the false prophets have poison in their mouth just like the scorpions have poison in their tail and we read in Isaiah that the, the tail is the false prophet see? so see how we when we look at this language how it all uh, ties in to as we compare spiritual things just what the Lord Jesus did in Matthew 13 when his disciples says Teach us the parable of the wheat and tares, see, and 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 so we're doing the, uh, the same thing as the Lord Jesus uh, taught us there in Matthew thirteen, and remember uh, when the Lord taught them that His disciples understood it, but but not everybody uh, is. Uh, you know, he explained it privately to his disciples, but like I says, not everybody that hears these things comprehend and, and understand uh, the spiritual uh, because it's um, this language is spiritual, see, and that's why we understand it in our spirit. And that when if somebody's not saved and they're spiritually dead, how are they going to, of course, they're not going to understand any of this. Say, and so, um, and so, praise the Lord that we those that see it, those that understand it, it's because our Lord Jesus 
explained it to us in our spirit. He gives he gives us understanding. So Lord willing, next week we'll pick it up in chapter nine, verse four.